a happy New Year's Eve. Morning. Last day of the year. Last trading day of the year. Last stream of the year. Last everything. Ooh. Last day. And I'm not even trading. Let me save you guys some effort here. Uh, there's no news today. It's going to be a pretty quiet day. See here the indices are down. Oh my goodness, my nose is still killing me. Uh, this is kind of interesting though, look at this. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, the mistake happened when payments from 2,000 business accounts were processed twice, meaning some employees saw their wages double, while suppliers also got double what they were expecting. What a Christmas miracle. How crazy is that? 176 million? Come on. Wild. Morning. Nothing happening here. Alright. Let's just dive right in. God, I need to like blow my nose or something. Okay, give me one second. So I'm looking at Tesla. I was looking at Tesla this morning. As you can see, we are channeling heavily. Like we saw that yesterday, but it's really cool to see this. Uh, you can see here, it wouldn't be surprising if Tesla had a pullback. So just be sure if you're in it, that kind of thing, be aware that can happen. However, we are consolidating around the 200. So maybe, maybe this is the, the support and we are bouncing off and we'll make higher highs. It's possible, it's possible. But if we are sticking to this channel, Probably coming down. But just be aware of that. Uh I forgot music was going on. Uh spy again, we I said this before and it hap it happens to be true, but remember I was like expect a pullback, expect a correction, like it's been too euphoric, and sure enough, the later half of the day, actually just the end of the day, not even the later half, just the end of the day, just a huge crush. And we are still consolidating around there. We'll see what happens. Uh, again, I wouldn't be surprised if we dropped even more today, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting a quiet day. What's in NVIDIA? Uh, okay, let's see. Yeah, so it looks like my line here is holding true. So it was um, having a descending pattern. It broke it, and now it's using it as a support. So now it's like consolidating on that trend line, you can see. Um. I don't know. I think it's bearish, or sorry, I think it's bullish overall. Like if you're talking big picture, I think it's super bear or bullish, but you you just have to be smart with it. I would say just dollar cost average into it if that's what you're going for. If you're looking for like a short term one month trade, I think it could go lower. I think that you could get a better price if you if you want to do that. Um, but if you're doing like a long term play, like you want to be in this for a year, well then just dollar cost average, you'll be fine. I had what is going on with my live chats? My live chats being like this, but full message in there. If I can refresh it or something. Okay, I guess we're not doing live chat today. If I had a bounce off for resistance turn support area, is that what I saw pre-market? Uh, but what would that even matter pre-market, I mean? Oh. Hmm. Weird. I don't know what's going on with my live chat. That's really upsetting. Oh, well. Uh, for Spy, you're saying it bounced off previous supports. 
Uh, resistance turn support. Understood. Let's find out. I mean, I would say this would be the resistance. If you're talking pre post market, and it's 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 right there right now. Actually, we're, we're it market opened. I totally forgot. Oh my God, did I start late? I feel like that was so quick. Okay, let's see here. Euphoria, we're in the first two minutes. See if that actually lasts or not. Four seventy four. Oh, down here. Um, let me think. Not quite sure where you're seeing that, like, way back here, this kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I guess I see it, like, these two points touch it, sure. Um, I just don't think it's, like, that big of a support or resistance, to be honest. But either way, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we blew past it, and now we're even going past the resistance here. So it doesn't look like that matters that much. <laughs> A uh, huge euphoria, actually. Look at this. In three minutes? Three minutes, we're up a dollar already? That's crazy. Crazy. A week? Yeah, definitely a week. Tough. Thing. Okay, sorry guys. No live chat. Be able to see it on the playback. Oh, but you'll see the chat on the playback, so who cares? Video breakout. Uh, it seems like everything is kind of doing that. I don't I don't know if it's like that special. As you can see, it's pulling right back, so... Uh, I wouldn't say it's a breakout until it breaks above, you know, something crazy. Like 5, 6, 10% breakout, that, that's a breakout. It's kind of little euphoria, I don't count. Um, what is leading the charge? Wish... Not much, not much. Everything, the most thing I have in my list, 2.75% up, uh, down 1.2%. Again, I I expect a very quiet day. I don't expect any super craziness, but we'll see. The NVIDIA, yeah, it looks amazing, but on the grand scheme of things, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Like, look at it. Maybe we'll hit the, oh, whoops, four hour. Like, maybe we'll even hit the 200. Like, maybe it's even that much euphoria, but I'm not sure. Like, I, I do think this could get rejected more, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Is there any news on it? Um, no. No news. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. I don't really... It looks good. Like, it looks... This, ni this is nice and euphoric, and it looks great, but I, I don't know. Skeptical is what I'm saying. Very skeptical. Go back to SPY, see if just the entire indice is doing the same thing. Uh, find it. Yeah. Nice and euphoric couple minutes. It's nice. First, the intro right here looking good. <coughs> Excuse me. Goodness gracious. No, this has not been like this at all. Just today. Yeah, look at that. That looks awesome. Lesson learned uh, in 2021. Let me just pull up a chart of Lucid because I think this is very instructive. A lot of these NASDAQ 100 stocks are green go because they peaked I'm earlier so sorry, guys, in the a year. And Lucid's a great example. I think they peaked in, what is this, February right here? Never took out those highs recently. And they've been. it's been impressive that they were able to uh, rise to those levels. But um, a lot of stocks are significantly off their highs. You take a look at a month to date. Uh, basis. Um, it's actually still pretty green here. Let me change this to a three-month view. So this will be the quarter. I, th I think we do have some outliers here to the downside. But um, when we talk about market breadth, uh, NASDAQ breadth in particular, this is the NASDAQ 100. I'm talking about the NASDAQ composite that has something like 3,000 stocks. Um, it's really been poor over the last few months, and it's been trending down. 
it's not necessarily a huge bellwether um, a warning sign for the market simply because um, it's the S&P 500 really that dominates and we have seen better breadth in the S&P 500. So um, it, there are mixed discussions around what can specifically happen into the new year uh, oh, regarding uh, the liquidity situation. So once the traders return, not necessarily next week, but really January. Three 10, months, Apple went up 27%. Going return, probably going to be able to That's capitalize wild. on some of this momentum that we've had from the late year. And a lot of times that just translates into January, calling it the go. January effect. Wow, that's actually huge. Okay, so what, what what's happening in the market? What is happening in the market? Any any news? Anything? Uh, no, no news at all. Actually, seems like everything is really just talking about next year, twenty twenty two. What are we expecting? Well, twenty twenty two. I am fully not expecting something like to look like this. Don't think 2022 is going to look like this. Um, I think overall it might look like this. You know what I mean? I think I think it'll be bigger swings. I think that's what we're going to see is bigger swings up and down. I don't think it's going to be as clear as just euphoria for, you know, seven months in a row. Like I, I don't think it's going to do that, uh, nor do I wish it does. Like I, I want a little bit more interest. You know what I mean? I want some more roller coaster rides because the thing is like when everything's nice and euphoric, it's awesome. If people just want to get in a stock and just wait a year and then sell out and then you made like 400%, congrats, you know, that's, that's awesome. Um, but it's really hard to find deals when everything is really euphoric. You know what I mean? Like it's really difficult to find deals when everything is up way overextended. It's just really difficult. And I don't really like that. I kind of like the chaos of everything. And so I, I do expect to look like this. Like the last two months, I really think 2022 is going to look like this financially. You know what I mean? Like overall it's up, but it's bigger swings. That's what I want to happen. Will it? I don't know. Maybe, maybe you know, something happens and everything is nice and euphoric. But I mean, we don't have as much going into 2022, right? Like the whatever. COVID relief stuff like none of that's happening i don't think anymore but, i mean i think we should be back to normal and i mean like 2018 2019 sort of market like i think we should just be going back to that but i don't know I mean, we'll see we'll see i don't know maybe you guys like the euphoria because it's easy you know what i mean which it is it's super simple to trade it's like you threw money anywhere in the later half of 2020 or anywhere in 2021, you probably made money. You know what I mean? Like it was just, it was easy mode, but we'll see if that actually continues or not. And we'll see if anyone actually continues investing after it gets difficult, right? Like 2021, 2020, it was all, you know, it was AMC, it was GameStop, it was Wish, it was, you know, Bitcoin craziness. Like it was just a wild time. But I think we are moving away from that slowly. Speaking of crypto. Uh, okay, still consolidating around 48,000 for Bitcoin. Or that's Doge. Ethereum. Crashed down to 35.86 and then came back up. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Morning, Lisa. Nice to see you again. Um, I will say for anyone who cares for crypto, I do believe in Ethereum more than Bitcoin, to be honest. Like, I think Ethereum has a better future, especially with like Ethereum 2.0 coming out and so forth, whenever that will be. Um, but their smart contracts a lot quicker, you know, seems better. So I do think Ethereum is kind of the way here. Like, I would definitely throw more in Ethereum if I could, or if I, you know, if I were get, getting into crypto, rather. But... Bitcoin's good too. You know what I mean? Both are great. What else is happening? Anything else on my list going nuts? Not really. Really at all. How's Tesla doing? Okay. Doing well. Indices are going up. Nice and euphoric. Yeah, let's see how we're going to end this year. I'm unsure. I, I don't know. I can imagine not a ton of people are trading today. I can imagine 
uh, that again, this is looking really good, but I don't know if it's going to last. Like maybe it's only good for the first 30 minutes and then we start dropping off. Yeah. Again, I'm, I'm just kind of skeptical of this euphoria. I, I don't know. I don't know. I think the real buying is going to happen at the start of the new year, not at the end this year. I, it just doesn't seem, doesn't seem right to me. I've been wrong many times before, so. Everyone else is having a great New Year's Eve, though. Does anyone have any crazy plans for New Year's? Going to a, some friend's house and enjoy the end of a year. Nothing crazy for me, but hope everyone else is going to have a good time. Start of the New Year, though. That if you haven't got for free five stocks from Weevil for opening an account, that's a good way to ring in the new year. Open up a Weevil account. Do that with the link below. Plus plugs. But if you do that, I mean, it's free money. And then you're on, you're ready and set to go for 2022. Don't worry about that part. Setup's already done for you. I am. Something to look into. Something to look into. Some of you guys have already done it, actually. I've already I've gotten messages from uh, Weeble telling me that people have been referred to with my link. So congrats to those people. Hope they got a lot of money from those free stocks. SoFi has been an interesting story. Uh, we had a really huge euphoria yesterday. I sold yesterday, which was nice. And we'll see if this continues or not. It doesn't look like it is currently, but... Really interesting. It got overextended even yesterday, which is insane that I could even get up there in one day. Like, well done. And now we'll see what happens. Uh, usually after Euphoria, we see pullbacks. Just the fact of the matter. That's usually what happens. We'll see. AMC. Looks like we're still riding that 50. Nothing crazy there. We are pulling back slightly on this on SPY here. Let's see if that continues or not. Lemonade is taking charge at 2.6%. EMD is up there. A four hour chart. Nice, nice little breakout from AMD uh, above the 50 and the 200. Looks like a, a buying cycle is on the way. RSI is pointing up. Everything's looking good for AMD. Um, it's just a slow moving stock, but. Congrats to that. Pfizer is up there. Newegg is way down on the low end, three point per, or three point one three percent. Wow, this thing is getting crushed. Alibaba's down there. Peloton, Block or Square, whatever you want to call it. Matterport is down there. Sadly, just kind of not getting able to. Rise above. Needs to break above this 200 and start making higher highs, but we'll see how long it takes to do that. We'll see how long it takes. I don't, I don't know. Like, I feel like we found the bottom already. So maybe just more consolidation, build up the volume, and then we'll take off. Maybe. I don't know. I do see good things with this company in the future. So hopefully it can remain up there. I'd hate for it to go back down to like below $20. That would suck. Man, yeah, I told you guys, it's a, it's kind of a boring day. I mean, there's just nothing happening. No news. Really anything. See if there's any news stories, anything I can cover for you guys. Indices, you can see here, are now green. Do or die moment for Congress to take action against big tech. Okay. How so? Raj, if I do three day trades in Robinhood and another in three and we five days I'll be marked. Five days will I be marked as a PDT? Two different platforms. You're good. You don't have to do that. 
Uh, you can do three day trades with Robinhood, three day trades with Weeble, and you're perfectly fine. Do that all the time. Yep. And that's no worries. You can absolutely do that. Um, okay, so with dozens of bills drafted and renewed, outrage from lawmakers over potential harmful impacts of platforms like Facebook, Google, uh, sorry, Facebook and YouTube, um, because of the, I forget her name, but the, that woman that came out and said that, um, what would, what, they, what would you do though? Do as I'm reading this, you guys should think about this. Let's say let's say your Congress, your your, you can pass any law you want, just like just with a snap of a finger, you're good. How would you regulate a platform like Facebook? How would you do that? How do, how do you legally regulate them? Because the problem that we're seeing is well, one the algorithm problem the algorithm problem is massive um so basically there's tons of bad things with um facebook so as you can see i mean there's obviously like bots everywhere like russian troll farms like this is a real thing there's i think it was like 19 of the top 20 christian groups on facebook were run by russian troll farms 90 sorry what is that 19 out of 20, 95 percent of the top 20 aren't even real. I mean, that's insane. How do you regulate that? Because uh, you want people to make groups. I mean, that's the whole point of Facebook is to connect with people with common interests, right? You want like that to still be a thing, but you just don't want people with bad intentions coming in. So that's one issue is you know uh, nefarious activities second issue is that is the um algorithm so facebook's kind of sneaky where is if you even just get an invite to a group that you don't even want they just send out mass invites like something you get i'm sure you've seen that before like this person you never heard of invited you to this ridiculous group that you don't want to be in and i have no idea how you even got to that just because you got the invite, Facebook will start pushing their content onto you. Your feed, whatever. And it's not because of anything that you did, you could have just ignored it. Even if you declined it or ignored it, it doesn't matter. Just because you got the invite, the algorithm will pick that up and say, maybe they want this content just to see what's in there. That's just not true. And so they do this all the time. And so, and again, it's a problem with the algorithm. algorithm. So we'll see if... That even it's it's so difficult to do this. So let's see, takeover house could stall antitrust legislation. I wrote. Excuse me. A package of tech-focused antitrust bills have already crossed a major hurdle. Advancing with bipartisan votes. Um. Da -da 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 -da. Still express reservations, sure. What does the bill say? That's what I want to know. How would you... Antitrust legislation? Uh, again, how do, you, how do you possibly regulate these companies? How? Antitrust regulators will continue to forge ahead, sure. What does that mean, though? Kids focus regulation. Okay. Um, in part of in part due to the widespread outrage and concern that members expressed following revelations about Facebook's impact on young users through internal leak. Hagen. Hodgen? Hodgins? Whatever. An update to the children's online privacy. Oh, interesting. Maybe kids shouldn't have Facebook. Maybe, huh? They shouldn't be on there. Would you guys pass that? Let's say uh, you aren't legally allowed to have Facebook until you're 16 or any social media. 
sure maybe some of you have kids do they have social media and if so what age are they is that okay how's their psyche because of facebook or because of instagram or tiktok I don't have kids, but conceptually, I want to say I don't want them to have any social media at all until they're like, I mean, hopefully never. All right, that's the hope. Hopefully never. But I don't know, like 14. I would like them not being. I never like social media. I hate social media. Just in general. I don't think YouTube social media. It is. YouTube definitely is social media, but it's more educational in my opinion. It can be. It can be. YouTube is whatever you make of it. You know what I mean? If you want to be entertained or if you just want to laugh, it can do that. But if you use it how I use it and you want to learn something and educate yourself and you know, that content, well, then you'll only see that. So to me, like YouTube is so much better than anything else out there um, just because it's creator-oriented. I mean, you come across people with nefarious, you know, intent but it's so rare so rare you know what i mean like if you get scammed on youtube like that sucks but you got scammed on youtube i don't know how you even did that but that's possible only speech yeah exactly the, the only thing i use daily is youtube don't get on i have an instagram but i don't use it basically which sucks because I, I probably should probably should i'll use it more in the new year just because i want to start promoting my stuff but I don't want to. On a personal level, I, I hate it. It. I don't know about you guys, but there's... There's times when I'm, like, scrolling on, like, let's say, Instagram. And I'm seeing all these pictures at, like, lightning speeds. You know what I mean? Like, every three seconds, there's a new picture. And I feel in my brain, like, different parts of it light up. As if, like, I'm in a scientific experiment or something. You know what I mean? Or, like, a psychological experiment. Like, I feel these things light up in my mind, and I'm like, oh, God. It's so much. I hate it. It's like, this is what's happening to everyone, and no one cares. <laughs> yeah, it's like, if I see a picture of food, like, I feel like this, like, part of my brain, like, like literally, like, light up, like, like have a reaction. And if I see a people like friends or something like in a group of friends and a different part of my brain like lights up like it's it's very strange I hate it I hate it it's like I know they're using this psychology on me <laughs> like I feel it very annoying but yeah I hate it I hate social media I wish we weren't so reliant on it it does good things but it does so much bad so much bad to not just your common person that's addicted, but to, like, young teenage girls taking their own lives. Like, crazy stuff. It's just wild. I wish we weren't so dependent, but... Sadly, it's out of out of my hands. It's out of my hands. Uh, you can see here, I mean, this is as expected. Um, I know I'm not talking too much about it just because I said it before. Spy, what happened? Euphoria, I didn't believe in it. And sure enough, we are falling back down. Not saying it has to stay down here. It could start building back up as it, maybe it looks like it is, but I don't, I don't know. I don't expect anything crazy today. Don't expect euphoria. Don't expect any crazy crashes. I think it's just going to be like a eh, consolidation day. So far, coming back up. Nice. Love to see that. But yeah, I just don't uh, don't expect a crazy day. So really, it's just me just talking about anything I want to talk about. That's what, that's what's happening today. Um, I'm gonna start trading January second, I guess, because the market's closed tomorrow. Or wait, today's Friday. January third. Is that right? It's the first day. Oh. Yield is somewhere around, you know, one and a half percent uh, right now. But, you know, there's an expectation that that's going to start to grow to, to you know, two percent. Blow my nose real quick, sorry. Potentially higher. So um, that's going to be an interesting um, one to watch because, you know, of course, 
when interest rates rise, you know, it's not just, you know, the cost of borrowing for corporations, but it's the cost of borrowing for everybody. And that has a potential to, to ripple through the economy. Although as, as your other, one of the other chart, charts that you have shows, stocks still traditionally have gone up after rate hikes. Um, finally, let's talk valuations for a sec, Sam, because this has been a perennial topic, right, for the past. Hold on. I'm virtually introverted, so I don't talk to nobody or care what people are doing. Yep. As I feel the same way. Uh, I don't really care what people are doing. I mean, if they're working, here's the thing. If let's say Instagram was people just showing them working on their passion projects, you know what I mean? Beautiful. I would love to be on Instagram. Like if I just saw people working on their stuff and like, here's what they're, and they're promoting it. Like, here's what I'm doing, whatever, something creative and so forth. Like awesome. That's what Instagram should be for. Yeah, I don't know. If Twitter was just people like actually, you know, conversing and like exchanging ideas and, you know, making these kind of communities, it'd be great. It'd be wonderful. But that's not what we're seeing. We're seeing people that are just full of vanity. You know what I mean? When it comes to Instagram, where it's just pictures of whatever themselves, it's not very artful. It's just like, here's what I'm doing today. It's just, that's it. And that's kind of it. It's like, I, I just don't care. Like I want, I want to see you work on something that I care about your work. I'm sure that you're a lovely person, but I care about your work more. I want to see these passion projects. I want to see really cool stuff. Um, and, but instead we're just seeing them with, you know, whatever, like a latte at Starbucks, like it's cold today. You're like, okay. Like, and like, <laughs> like what value is this providing to, to anyone? Like, but whatever, that's just me. And so you'll see my Instagram, like I have one down there, like it's all based on my videos. Like it's just all based on value of like, here, here's what I'm working on. This is it. It's not a good Instagram. I'll tell you that right now. And you can see that for yourself in the, in the description there. It sucks because I hate using it, but I'll use it better uh, next year. It'll be a lot more artful, a lot more interesting. But yeah, if it was just people like conquering their goals and doing whatever, great. That's what, that's what it should be for. But that's that's definitely not what's happening. Nowhere near. Okay, I see. I see this. Let's see if it hangs true. But yeah, people are posting stupid stuff, and then Twitter. Pff, I don't even know why anyone's on Twitter anymore. Isn't that just? It seems like a failed event to me. Who, why, why are we doing this? Why, why are we doing this? Why argue with people over the internet that probably aren't even people, right? Like, what, what's the point? Feel good at the end of your Twitter session? I'm sure most don't. You know what I'm saying? So get off. Why, why get on something that makes you feel bad by the end of it? What's the point? Try Netflix instead. It's a little bit better. At least you're watching art, hopefully. Oh, look at this. Breaking below the 200. We're actually negative now. We're, the indice is negative. Uh-oh. If, if only someone called this. I did. I did. Watch the playback. I called this. Twitter is for people crazy about politics and like to argue. Yep. Sadly, that's it too. It's like, because you have a platform, I don't think, I don't think everyone should have a platform. Does that make sense? It's nice that everyone can have a platform. That's nice and freedom based and, you know, good, good for everyone. But I don't think that's actually true. And I don't know how to regulate that. I mean, I, I wouldn't, but, you know, if you could possibly regulate that to make people, I don't know, like you had to, I don't even know. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Never mind. But I don't know. It, the thing is, like, I just hate that everyone can just, I don't know how to say it. 
I just don't like Twitter. That's really it. it the problem is volume. Like, really, the problem is just a, a problem based on volume. And this happens literally for everything, for society in general, for groups, everything. It's great if we have less than 100 people, let's say. I mean, look at this group right here, right? I mean, there's, I don't know, like, whatever, how many viewers are watching, and then people watching the playback and so forth. Great. I've not heard any mean comment yet in the no anywhere i've not seen any negativity not that i'm not expecting it i mean i'm sure <laughs> that that will happen at some point but it's because we have a very small group that we all want to, each other to like thrive and prove and we're all just trying to learn it's a very clear mission right and so what's the point of being neg negative about that there isn't and so we aren't right but as soon as we cross across the threshold of let's say a thousand people watching at any given time or whatever well now you have so many so much negativity coming in you have people having a bad day and they don't care they're just gonna scream out into the void and a void would be us it'd be a thousand people that no one really cares about so they don't care and so they'll just throw it right and that's what we're seeing like they'll throw crap just negative comments into that's what happens I mean, if you have a if you have a small town of four thousand people, I'm sure it's very nice. Actually, if you have a city of two million people, it's not so nice anymore. And what changed? I mean, nothing fundamentally, right? People living proximity to each other. I mean, what changed? Well, you got traffic. You got everyone trying to climb a ladder. You know, competition. I mean, so much happens. So it's a problem of volume. That's really what the main issue is. It's a problem of volume. Look at that crazy jump. Huge advertising platform. Oh yeah, 100%. I mean, every social media is. I mean, YouTube included. All advertising. Which isn't bad inherently. But you can imagine why that gets bad. If when everything is driven by money. And not community. If that makes sense. Like. Clicks is what makes money. Clicks is what makes money. If you know anything about Facebook advertising. You're on a click. Uh, basis. Right. So you pay Facebook. To have them advertise your stuff. And then if people click on it. You pay Facebook. Right. So Facebook is incentivized to throw your content. To the most prominent user. And to make your stuff uh, absolutely clickable. Very shockingly clickable. You know what I mean? And so that they're based on money there, right? And then the company is also based on money because they want you to click. So they're going to make very shocking stuff, right? So you click on it and then they make money. So you buy their product or use their service or whatever. It's a terrible system because it's it's purely based on, again, kind of that nefarious activity. And it could be very altruistic, or you're just like a shoe company and you want people to buy your shoes. That's completely fine. It's just the psyche is the thing that gets uh, punished at the end of the day. Which do we care about? I guess not. I guess we don't. Because in return we get this free service where we get to see, you know, people drinking lattes and having a nice time at Disneyland or something. So we trade that for a social experiment that I'm not even sure anyone truly cares about. But yeah. Just the old days of YouTube when companies didn't care to advertise. Yeah. Advertisements don't bug me as much um, on YouTube specifically because here's the thing. The trade-off is a lot better when it comes to YouTube. What I mean by that is, here's how YouTube works fundamentally. Um, I watch YouTube all the time, every day, for hours, I would say, right? Creators, uh, like myself, well, actually not yet, but monetized creators, I'm not monetized yet. I have to get a thousand subs. So subscribe if you haven't already. Help me get monetized because I, I, want, I want it really badly. But if you um, are monetized... How you how they get paid is a per thousand views, so they get a payment per thousand views. It can be anywhere from two dollars to twenty dollars um, per thousand views, right? Depending on what sector you're in. Finance is a pretty high one. We 
think finance people get like anywhere from like 15 to 35 dollars per thousand views like it's nuts that's because it's very uh, niche market and you know it's money based so companies are a little bit more competitive in bidding their advertisements anyway so you watch it and all you have to do is see an ad and you know you know it's not the greatest thing it'd be great if there was no ads you can use YouTube premium for that if you really want to but um but you watch it and it helps the creator out and it's not because it's youtube paying them companies pay youtube you pay creators it's a beautiful system you don't have to do anything all you have to do is click and watch and it's different than facebook or instagram or twitter because you're not just like scrolling on useless stuff you're hopefully watching something of value something that will somehow impact your life change your life that kind of thing help your day-to-day practical advice whatever it is so to me it's like okay because i'm using it for learning and education and so forth so it's like okay i get to see this video that's going to hopefully make me a better person or make me learn this thing and all i have to do is watch an ad and this ad will directly benefit the creator i'm okay with that like that's perfectly fine with me I'm happy to help the creator as long as it's a good video. You know what I mean? As long as I care about it and, you know, it's a good thing. I'm okay with that. That's completely fine with me. My issue is with Twitter and Instagram where you're scrolling on nothing, where I'm not getting a thing out of this and then I'm getting ads and their payment structure is way worse because the creator's not getting paid at all. Not even a little bit. The company's getting paid and then Facebook's getting paid. We're just the product. That's it. Yeah. Uh, let's see what you guys are saying. Got to pay to get what was free in YouTube glory days. Use ad blocker. I mean, that's free. I like every video. Yep. It's a support thing you can do. 100%. The, again, the difference between YouTube and the rest of social media when it comes to advertising is that the advertising is helping the creator. That's good. That's a good thing. If the ads were somehow helping Instagram creators, that would be good if they get to advertise what they want and then we get, um, what's it called? Associated advertising based on that. What I mean by that is if you see a photographer and you follow a photographer and they and you see an advertisement, you know, on their profile for whatever, a photography school, and you know that that advertisement helps the creator get money, I don't have a problem with that anymore. That's completely okay with me because now if I choose to click on the advertisement or use the advertisement for my own advantage, the creator benefits. That's great. That's awesome. Like that's, that should be okay. Because there's an a, like an energy transfer, you know what I mean? They put work into this, I'm going to use whatever they're advertising, and then they get money. That's okay to me. But that's not what's happening. That's not what's happening at all. Is you're using this free service, the creators aren't getting a cent, and then the companies are making money. That's not okay anymore. Because what's the incentive there? Nothing for the creator. Nothing. It doesn't matter. Why create anything of value at that point? Right? So you have people just advertising their personal lives. Is that good? I mean, I don't know. It could be great. It could be good. It could be bad. But it's definitely not a good energy transfer. Mine, Sammy, I'm guessing you're talking about your kids. Mine don't get social media. But they do they use YouTube. YouTube, I think, is the best social media. And I hate to even throw it in the grouping of social media. But technically, it is. Technically, it is. Still, again, it's it's more of just an equal energy exchange that makes it okay. Creator gets money through these advertisements. And you're getting associated advertising, so you're seeing something, hopefully, that you care about. That's okay with me. Watch ads all the time. What's another 10, 15 seconds of your day? It's like, wh- who cares? Like, look at something else for 15 seconds and then go back. Not a big deal. And know in your mind that you're helping a creator out when you're watching it. That makes it a little bit better, in my opinion. I mean, like, I watch Twitch all the time. I don't know if you guys watch Twitch, but I love people, you know, doing whatever. And when I see an advertisement beforehand, that's fine with me. I don't care. It's like, okay, whatever. 
I'll get to their stream. It's going to be another 15 seconds or five seconds of my life. Oh, that's fine. This advertisement helps them. And I want them to continue what they do. So I'm going to participate in that. Equal energy exchange. Okay. Still afraid of any setup that allows algorithms to control the flow of info. Sure, but imagine, I mean, David, look at your YouTube homepage. That's all algorithm based. Don't you find interesting stuff on your homepage? Like if you curate it correctly and like videos, speaking of which, definitely like this video because if you like this stuff, you'll see more stuff like it. But like the video, right? Like truly hit the like button on videos you truly like and hit your homepage. Then you're going to see dozens upon dozens of videos that you've never seen before probably by creators maybe you've never seen before that are so good. Like the algorithm is so wonderful on, on YouTube. Because, again, it's curated for you. It's like this nice curation of content. And while the algorithm is evil, because if it was something like Facebook or Instagram, where it's something probably with nefarious use, it's not like that with YouTube. Not even a little bit. It's like, oh, he likes Woodshop all of a sudden. Let's let's throw some Woodshop at him. What? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, that's completely okay, right? Nothing wrong with that. It's not like they're trying to control you. You know what I mean? Like YouTube isn't trying to like control your attention. They're just trying to get you on YouTube as long as possible, which is, you know, that's, I guess could be nefarious, but they're just also trying to make money. And again, you're learning something. You know what I mean? It'd be like, oh, they're trying to, you know, uh, make kids addicted to PBS specials. Like, okay. Like, is that a bad thing? Like, I don't even think that's a bad thing. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's basically what they're trying to do. It's like, we're, we're, we're trying to hook them on documentaries. It's like, okay, like, is that a bad thing? Like, I don't know. Probably not. Yeah. I'm not, I know I'm not talking about this, but look at this line. I mean, it's so impressive. I drew the line here. You guys saw it and we are hitting some resistance right at the line. Not hard to, not hard to see. Uh, simply draw a line at the peaks of the pricing. Boom, there's a trend line. Not hard to see. Not hard. I'm not talking about it just because it's so blatantly right there. You know what I mean? Not hard to see. Look, you can do it again. Look, boom. Actually, something like that. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, uh, it's not really hard to spot this. Sending pattern, channel trading. Easy, easy. Yeah, if you're new here, just draw lines. Draw lines places, you know what I mean? It, it really puts into context of what's actually happening here. Because if the lines weren't there, you'd be maybe a little bit confused. And you're like, okay, I guess it's going down, but like, what does that mean? How long is it going to go down? When is it going to break? You know, lines answer all of those. Lines answer all of those. Anyway, that's my two cents on social media and the difference between YouTube and everything. It's, it's a big difference. I mean, it's night and day difference. I don't need to tell you that. Obviously, Instagram's not Facebook. Or sorry, obviously, Instagram's not YouTube. Obviously. There we go. And I'm not saying, really, the last thing I'll say, I mean, I'm not saying that YouTube is like this angel on earth of like, you know what I mean? Like, they don't have any bad intentions or something. I'm sure they do. But again, it's it doesn't really matter to me what their intentions are, as long as they portray it in a way that helps the community. And they have. I mean, truly, most things they've done, minus hiding the dislike count, I don't know why they would do that. That's really stupid. But um, for the most part, like YouTube really makes a perfect platform for everyone included. Advertisers, YouTube, like the company itself, um, creators and viewers. Everyone wins. Every single person wins in the system. 
wonderful. Like what, what platform does that? Not really any. Etsy, maybe Etsy. Etsy is also like a pretty perfect system, I'd say. But yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's massive. Massive. I love YouTube. I've always been on YouTube. Like I've always been deep diving into crazy research on stupid stuff. Like I love it. So it looks like it's trying to test this 50 line here, but uh, it doesn't look like anything's actually happening. Go back to the stock list. Nothing crazy up, nothing crazy down. Boring day. Boring day. That's not SoFi. Go SoFi. Well done. Of course, I get out before it hits all of that. <laughs> Whatever. They were breaking out of the trend line somewhat. Perhaps. Speaking of which, y'all, I uh, made my new YouTube channel. Finally made it. Um, do I? Trying to link it for you guys. Um, I'm trying to do this without signing out. Um, hmm. Yeah, hopefully this doesn't like do anything bad. Hold on, give me one second. Tell me if I'm still live or not. There we go. All right, that's the new channel. Uh, can you make a video on how stock market moves during certain times in a year? Oh, definitely. Yeah, that'd be a good video, actually. Oh, looks like we're breaking out. Look at this. Look at this. Well, well, well. Here, I'll even delete this. Take a look. Take a gander. Let's punch them. Who are we punching? The the social media sites? I'd, if I could punch Facebook, I'd punch Facebook as hard as I can. I hate what they've become, what they are. But, um, Yeah, but there's the uh, channel. There's nothing on there yet, but there will be in the new year. Get ready for it. It's going to be awesome. Gonna be awesome. I'm really proud of the videos I've made so far. It sucks too, because I see Facebook. If I could personify Facebook, I see Mark Zuckerberg, and I think everyone feels the same way. But it sucks too, because like Facebook looks like him, and it's like, ugh, God. Get filled, set trailing stop loss for five. Yeah, sure. What coffee is this? It's a, I got this espresso blend for Hanukkah called Fireman Coffee. Really good. It tastes like chocolate. Like, it legitimately barely tastes like coffee. It actually tastes like Hershey's dark, dark chocolate. Crazy. Delicious, let me tell you. But I always drink espresso in the morning. I don't have time to like sit there and brew my Chemex or anything like that. Like I just want to get stuff and go. I got a stream to be on, you know what I mean? Speaking of streams, if you haven't hit the like button, 
hit the like button. It helps out the YouTube algorithm. And I found out that the more likes the video gets upon streaming, and then when I when I sign off, it gets pushed out so many people when there's like a ton of likes on it, which is awesome. So yeah, if you haven't already, click the button. My long-term swing trading seals up, and I think everybody hates Facebook. Yeah, sucks too. Everyone hates it, but everyone's still on it. It's crazy. Wild time, guys. Okay, man, I wish there was anything to talk about when it comes to the market. There is... <laughs> is there any news that refresh? No news. Dude, this is crazy. I've never seen this. One, two, three. Oh, this didn't even count. Three news stories all today. Three. That just does not happen. And one of them is just a question of, are the markets open on New Year's Eve? <laughs> oh my god. There's zero news. Nice retracement from 9.45. For the time, so that'd be 7.45. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we'll see what happens here. Oh. Yeah, it's uh, been an interesting day for the market. I mean, this is kind of wild, I guess. Not really, because, like, again, the two edges here or is it is a two dollar difference you know what i mean it's like eh eh think reversal is possible absolutely but yeah whatever says it the best it's a flat day a flat consolidation day i don't think we're gonna see anything crazy most people probably aren't even trading today you know what i'm saying like most people are probably like vacationing or whatever with family whatever next week reversal yeah 100 uh, percent. again i think this thing could definitely set out i mean look at everything here let's look at the day chart is it different yeah i do think this thing can fall i think it should fall to the 50 like that'd be great if let's say january 3rd it did that and then we start building up it'd be great I don't, know, I don't know if it'll happen but that'd be nice get bull flag from 184 hour Bull flag? Here? What what do you see? I don't see that. Oops. Really? Oh, I see what you're saying for right now. Um uh, I don't know. Next year's gonna be insane. I don't even know what to expect. Yeah, I went really sideways after that. I don't know. I'm not sure. I hate making these kind of predictions for the future like that. Like it's if you look at the day chart here, like this isn't really hard to see at all. You know what I mean? That Drawings are not killing me right now. Okay. Anyway, so that's been the trend line for ever, for the past like forever, forever. Okay, this is insane. I don't know why it's doing that, but whatever. Listen, I mean, look at the day chart. I think it's a little bit more telling on a big picture of what's happening here. But you can see the MACD is curling down, RSI is curling down. I, I could absolutely see this thing coming back down to the 50. Uh, in the next few days, maybe? Hopefully, you know what I mean? I honestly would hate if it was just euphoria. If, if, like, we just kept going up. I, I honestly don't want that. I want things to be really cheap for next year, so the investors get really nice and happy, and then they throw billions of dollars into stocks. That's what I want to see. And for that to happen, I think we need to see just a, just a slight drop. Just a slight drop.
but I don't know. Say. Crazy, like, V-shaped recovery here. I mean, look at this. I mean, this is just boop, boop. So quick down, so quick up. Market's crazy. Market's a crazy place. As you can see here, there we are just consolidating pretty much within this. In between the 50 and the 200. Stock buybacks are at a record high, so yeah, so you follow through. Yep. Mm-hmm. 100%. Did you miss anything? Just me talking mad crap about some companies. That's really it. Sorry guys, this is not much happening. If they're people are talking about gold, anyone care about gold? I don't. S&P 500 is a little change in final trading. Set for 27% gain. 27% for S&P 500 in 2021. It's pretty great. Pretty great. Other than that, nothing is happening at all. <laughs> oh boy. It's expected. It's all expected. If what about gold? Sort of the moving Tell average me. here, we've seen on balance this year um, some money come out of that GLD ETF. No problem, David. But Happy I, to be here. As you talk to Happy to be here. clients, consumers, what have you, how people view gold at this point um, in their portfolio, and if that view of the role that it plays has changed at all. Okay, let, let's address the outflows first of all, Julie. You, uh, you, you brought that up. Um, we've lost about $10 billion to redemptions from GLD in 2021 so far. Um, but that comes after a year in 2020 when we were up $15 billion. So we're still running pretty well uh, if you take the two years as an average. As far as where investors see um, the gold uh, in their portfolio, his name is George Milling Stanley. It seems like his family have been in gold for generations. I don't care at all about gold. Not even a little bit. I used to trade gold. Not actual gold, but like, uh, gold. The Nug? No, not at all. What is that? I'm pretty sure it's called Nug. Oh yeah, here it is. Nug T. Yeah, I used to trade this all the time. Yeah, it's just a gold ETF. That's it. But I used to trade this all the time. I remember these days. I would day trade gold. It was pretty good actually. I made a lot of money with gold. Don't do it anymore because I don't care. Now I'm doing the Basically the same exact thing, but for the S&P 500, <laughs> except now I'm doing options, where I was not doing options before. Yeah. Oh, look at the news. Stock market news live update. Stocks see muted open as 2121's closing, uh, closeout trading session begins. Even the news says, hey, there's nothing happening. Okay. I don't want to waste you guys' time here. I think I'm just going to sign off. I, I just, there's nothing to cover. I mean, there's absolutely nothing to cover. We're consolidating indices. No stocks at all are going up or down. Everything's just kind of... Bam this. Subscribe to that channel. Just subscribe to it. Do me a favor. I promise really good content is coming out in... Tomorrow? New Year's Day? 
Maybe tomorrow. Yeah, probably tomorrow. So yeah, it'll, it'll come out tomorrow. Subscribe to that channel. It's going to be really cool. And yeah, we'll go from there. Slow month. Yeah. Definitely a slow end to the month, that's for sure. Definitely a slow end. But that's to be expected. We all we all called this. It's all good. I'll be back January 3rd. Check out the new video. Uh, the new channel tomorrow. That is that, I think. Yeah. So check the description for all the links. And yeah. All right, guys. See you in the new year. Be safe out there. Don't get too drunk. And if you do, make sure you make it to the restroom or you toss your cookies. Goodbye.